And we're live. Hello. Hello. Woohoo. Yay. Yay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Matthew Sharapa. This is my channel. Hopefully, you know that information, although I haven't posted here in quite some time. We're going to pretend like that's not the case. Uh, this is the live show for the Vintage Books and Wine Book Club pick of November, which was Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch by Rivka Galchen. And I think we'll kick things off uh, by giving introductions for people who might not know who all of you wonderful people are. And I think because astrology is important to this book, if everyone could give their star sign as part of their introduction, so like name, channels, star sign, and then maybe we can throw in star rating of the book. Um, Ace, why don't you go first? Hello, I'm Ace. I'm under construction for everything. So I'm not going to give out any of my links. I'm a Gemini and I gave this book three stars. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Tiana? Hi, I'm Tiana. Um, I run the channel Tiana Kelly, bookstore I'm Tiana Kelly Reads, and Twitter Tiana Kelly. I gave this book a three stars as well, and my star sign is a Capricorn. Oh. Blake. Uh, I'm Blake the Book Eater. You can find me on socials under Blake Book Eater on Instagram and Twitter. And I'm also under construction at the moment uh, because I'm a Virgo and I need things to be perfect. Therefore, editing takes me fucking months. Um, <laughs> And I also gave this book a three star. <laughs> okay. Um, and as I said, my name is Matthew. If you're here, you should know that. I am a Leo. I feel like I've talked about that before. Um, shocking. And I gave this book a four star. So I am in the uh, upper end here, which is lovely. Um, I wanted to know, this is kind of my favorite question that we ask. Uh, I always think it's interesting. We often ask, you know, what were kind of like impressions going in if we knew anything about the book. Um, I like to talk about and think about like how the vibes and feelings approaching a book can often influence our experience, you know, and takeaways. So um, I would like to know, did anybody have any like particularly strong feelings going in or knew anything about the book? Or was this a complete like don't know anything experience? Well... I would say the like I went in because I just read this other book called Slewfoot by Brom like a month and a half ago. And it was also like about witches and witch trials and took place like at this time. That one was a lot more like fantastical and there was actual magic and stuff like that. Um, but you saw like a lot of the suspicion and um, that kind of stuff. So I was kind of like ready for that. Um, and I... Like we'll talk about it more, but like I was actually surprised by a lot of the kind of like um, nuances in the quote unquote confessions. Like I thought it was going to be kind of a cut and dry witch hunt and that very much wasn't this book. And that's something that I was pleasantly like surprised with. Super cool. Tiana, it looked like you were you had something. Yeah. All I knew is what you had said, like, after our Dune live show, or I think it was live show, the uh, Blacklands live show, and I was like, oh, okay. I was expecting, I've seen the play the night of January 16th, and I don't know why, but I was expecting that vibe of, like, so many suspects, and yes, we do get that aspect, but in the delivery, I was like, wait, this is something different entirely on its own, and I did like it, but obviously, three stars, I took some away some points, I was just like, wait, I feel some disconnect with some characters. That was just a me thing, I know that's other things, but I just feel some disconnect. Ace, any uh, vibes going in? So before I read this book, I was watching like the movie trilogy Fear Street mm -hmm. on Netflix, which is really good, which is like about like this person who was accused of being a witch and whatnot, but it's a lot more serious. And so I went into this book knowing it's about witch trials and I thought it would have a similar vibe of like the seriousness of like the trials and whatnot. But this was actually somewhat humorous, which I was surprised about. So yeah. Totally. I had uh, no idea what the book was going in. I think we had briefly touched that it was historical fiction just from like plot summary. Um, and what I was delighted to find out was that it's based on actual real history. Um, Johannes Kepler is like an actual person didn't know that, didn't know that even while reading it. Um, and his mother was accused of being a witch at this time. 
Um, and I only learned that post reading. So I was curious, did any of you know that Johannes Kepler was a person? Because I feel I, like I, now that I now that I know that uh, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I've heard that name before. But like I read this book completely unaware that like this was based on real history. No idea. I flipped to the acknowledgments and I was like, oh. <laughs> uh, I know that Johannes Kepler was a real person, but I didn't know they were talking about him in this book. Because like he was always referred to as Hans. And I, I, I did not connect that because I, I studied astronomy for a bit. So that's the only reason why I know he's a real person. <laughs> I like how I said um, she liked the uh, humor in the book and right off like the first page, <laughs> our man is just going in on him. And I, and I freaking love it. She's like, I don't, <laughs> don't want to do this. And like, he's like a nitwit. I'm like, yes, as you should, as you should. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting to like see how much history is built into it and i'd be curious to like learn more about the crafting of like their relationship is there documentation about it um i feel like that's kind of like an interesting thing to think about um i knew that he was a person and that his mom was accused but no real details of her life for trial which i think is probably like in part why we wrote this book was to like give voice to the main character and i think you know, this doesn't really fall into um, spoilery territory, but I think my favorite part about this book is something that appears in the first few pages. She's illiterate. The main character who we yeah. hear from, Katerina, is illiterate. And everything that we hear from is either written down by her neighbor, Simon, who's kind of like also her caretaker, um, or through testimony from this town. Um, and I thought that was pretty neat. Did anybody else have any particular reaction to that kind of being like the framework of this book? The story of like the untold story, that narrative, is, is that what you're asking? The, the fact that she's illiterate and that anything that we hear comes from transcription and or not actually from technically her voice. Yeah, well, I did like that aspect and I think it brings like a very realistic historical analysis to it as a story. And I'm just like, oh wait, this is, we, we see a lot of this somewhat, but then it's taking the responsibility as that relationship that's very different in what I liked. Cause it, it's usually like, educated person and, you know, a literate person. It's never like that dynamic of mother son that I've seen before. Mm -hmm. um, I actually, I am, I'm a huge fan of like the, the, um, what's it, um, the epistolary format. Um, like one of my favorite books, Frankenstein is like, is like entirely written in letters and stuff. And I think it, it's, it's a really interesting way of storytelling because you have to be very um, uh, like, precise in how you get information across because it's like the author can't really step in and say something it's all like character voices and what they're thinking or like you know very gothic you know like writing down their feelings and that kind of stuff and I thought that was really interesting because like at first I thought we were only going to get Katarina and then like I loved like the revelation that we're getting um these asides from Simon just like about like his experiences with Katarina as well so like you're you're hearing her voice but then you're also like observing her for, through the eyes of Simon which I thought was really cool yeah it's I think it's particularly interesting because she's incredibly smart like I don't know there's I feel like there's the, this common thing where we associate illiteracy where we associate illiteracy with like lack of intelligence right but like this is also like the 1600s, you know, people weren't taught to read and write. Very few people could, especially if you're a woman. So, like, I think that there's something interesting in how sharp she is and how voicey she is able to get as a character, despite the the, the meta knowledge that everything that we get as a reader is technically, like, written down. Yeah, I also loved the testimonials. I thought they were riot. Like they were just yes. so yeah. they were they were, they were like really little... fun to listen to on audiobook. Yeah. Yeah, same. They were like a palate cleanser. It was nice. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that, you know, the 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 more that the story progressed and the more we got uh, the trial testimonies, I agree. Like they, they were quite a pleasure to read. Um I feel like it would be fun to talk spoilers and to talk a little bit about later stuff. But I would first ask the question, would you recommend this book to people? Yeah, I would recommend it. It was it was it was a fast read. Um like I had I had I think maybe some issues with it which we can talk about. Um but like overall I enjoyed it. Um I thought like the narrative was really interesting. I thought um the the prose was really interesting. 
Um, and it's like, it's a really short book, so you can like blow through it in a couple days. So yeah, I recommend. I was working when I read this book, so um, I was enjoying myself a wee bit too much, um, especially with the young baby watching as, as my job. So I was just like, yes, adult humor, give me more, give me more. <laughs> so yes, I would recommend the book. Yeah, Please. I would recommend this to people who are like actual readers already. Like it wouldn't be something I would recommend to someone who just started getting into reading. Why yeah. do you say that? Um, I feel like, for a bit, I did find it slow, but like, I don't know. Like, I feel like if this was read by someone trying to get into reading, the pacing to me was fine because I'm I'm used to it. But like a lot of people who get into reading really expect there to be like a huge thing going on already. And like with this one, I feel like it really builds it up a bit. So I don't think <laughs> they would enjoy this as much as a first read, but it is really short and I did enjoy it. Yeah, I, I definitely would recommend this book to people. I, I agree with you, Ace, that I would be like cautious about the reader yeah. in that like it is a slower book. It's it's you know very internally concerned. It's not like a, a super plot driven, you know, yeah. it's not the crucible, like it's not like super action-y in terms of like events that transpire. Um, but I think it's so lovely. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I would love to talk spoilers, but first, um, for people who might be leaving because they don't want to be spoiled for the book, um, our next live show is actually in two weeks for A Wish in the Dark. Um, that'll be over on Ace's channel. How do I point? This is mirrored. Ace's channel. Um, oh, and it'll also be on uh, that Saturday, uh, the 14th. 18th. 18th. 18th, yeah. The day after Spider-Man No Way Home. That's, yeah, that's how you'll remember. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tune in for our last live show of the year. Um, at that live show, we will also reveal the books that we will be reading in 2022, which is, like, absurd to think about. How is it the end of the year? Wait, slow um, down. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> oh, I hate it. So super gross. Um, oh, cool. oh, I think it's spoiler time. Um, spoiler time. Does anybody have any like immediate thing that they want to discuss or talk about? Um, I was, okay. One thing I wanted to just mention, and I, it's kind of non-spoilery, but also a little spoilery. One thing I loved about the testimonials was that like the more you read them, you're like, fuck, like all these little things just keep adding up and adding up and just getting blown more and more out of proportion. Mm -hmm. And she is going to die basically because of these idiots. But then there's this inter interesting shift about, I would say two, two thirds into the book where some of the testimonials start being really positive and you kind of get the pushback from her neighbors and the people who know her. And they're like, yeah, no, that's dumb. And like, and you can like, I mean, obviously the, the court isn't really a character, but like in some of the questions, you can kind of like hear a bit of skepticism in like the, the, the testimony about her being a witch. And so like, I love that like interesting twist because like we all know about like witch hunts, we know how many people died like for no reason basically. And so like, at least for me, I was like, I'm reading a tragedy. Um, and then it wasn't until like that point where I was like, oh, maybe and then like at the end when I was like it's a true story I was like I'm actually glad I didn't know it was a true story because then I would have known that she would have lived so I'm glad that like that element was kind of in suspense for me uh, fully agree I think the the biggest success of this book to me was its ability to create doubt um one we don't actually hear directly from Katarina at any point right it's all written down Two, these testimonies come in and we don't necessarily hear any reflections on the testimonies themselves. Like, we don't necessarily like know what else is happening in the trial. We hear from people and then we don't necessarily hear whether it's like right or wrong what they said. And I think like I was with you, Blake, we're like partway through, I was just like, is she actually a witch? Like, I, like <laughs> or, or like, is she going to be caught or, you know, whatever it was. Um, I wasn't sure if the book was going to take some sort of like magical turn and like plot twist, she is a witch. Cause again, I did not know that this was based on a, a true historical event. Um, mm -hmm. But the descriptions were so well done. The, the cause, like the, the reasons why the people testifying dubbed her a witch 
were so absurd and like so absurd to the point where you couldn't even debunk what they were saying because like what's fascinating yeah. about this time in history is like what does and does not make you a witch feels entirely arbitrary like I, yeah the way that, like yeah. she was walking by and i felt a pain in my leg she's a witch yeah and my, like that's that's died. the devil that's the witchcraft but like meanwhile astrology super real like right, I, I, right. you know like like yeah ace uh, that's what i was gonna mention i was like how are they accusing her of being a witch but they're not accusing some sort of sorcery about her son they're literally relying on him about telling the stars like oh what will happen to me based on the stars but well, then well that, what you that's the question i want to ask is do you think these people actually believe that she was a witch i mean she tells us from the beginning that it's all made up and we do get yeah. some insight into a, a vendetta or like you know some sort of gripe with her that the town has and you know i think it is a fun question like do these people believe in witchcraft and devilry are they true religious zealots or is religion a tool for them to just like gain and prosper well i mean because i mean towards the end you realize that they're like literally selling her property out from under her and they're like they're like oh these guards are burning too much firewood and um that's our money that she owes us like so you're like, oh, these people are just like, they want a payday. Um, but then also there's a point where it's like, I feel like it's they started out as like, okay, we're just doing this because I, I want to talk about like being a widow and like loneliness in a bit, like, you know, in a bit, because like that's a whole other like subject, but like because they targeted her. But I feel like there's a point where the townsfolk just got so caught up in their own hysteria that they started to believe it. Um, yeah. And I think that comes through with like some of the more wild accusations, like halfway through. When so, she said, I, I, I was no, I go ahead. a question. Okay, so I don't know if I just completely passed by my mind this or something, but one of because I know like no. the accusations are so like crazy. One of them was like this boy who works at the cemetery, right? Mm -hmm. And apparently, she dug up her father's grave <laughs> to take her, his skull. Okay, did yeah, you, did, yeah, 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 that was, that was, wait, wait, did she, why did she do that again? So there's this weird play in the book, and I wasn't sure, like, what, what was true or what was not, because again, we don't yeah. really get, like, confirmation from anyone's testimony, but, like, Katarina was experimenting with, like, herbs and healing, and, like, at this time, you know, the amount that we know from, the, the, the amount that they knew from, like, what could actually, like, heal skin conditions and like cure things like I don't know they were kind of flying by the seat of their pants like not much of it was like super scientific this was the creation of those scientific methods right so like I wonder like is the skull thing a true thing is it like was it part of her like desire to concoct some sort of like new medicine like again like the line between witchcraft and not witchcraft is so arbitrary to me um that I'd be curious to know I'm Googling to see if it's factual, but my question was, was um, not even a question, it was a comment. When she's relaying to, uh, or she's relaying to herself about being a widow, she was like, I didn't dare get married a second time because I'm surprised I got married the first time. I said, damn, you, you gotta think it like really love yourself to be like, I really got married, had a kid and that man died. Oh, um, I love the cow. This is a cow stand account. Every yeah, time that cow stand account. the book, I was like, it better not die. <laughs> Oh my god, Um, I, I do, like, I, I agree with this. I really liked Katarina as a character. I thought she was quite saucy, um, which is fun. And then uh, here we get, she didn't dig up the skull based on the testimony, though. She just asked about it, and it seemed like she was just asking about it because she'd heard about this thing yeah yeah and then um, they, okay. they twisted that and like she was gonna dig it up and like make a goblet and drink blood from his skull and it was like no it's like that'd be kind of goth that'd be kind of cool oh uh, it's so obscure <laughs> the only fun. thing i see is healing crystal skulls that's it <laughs> okay that's, that's um, healing. but yeah I, I i loved what the book had to say about just like how afraid the townsfolk were of like an independent woman who wasn't relying on a man specifically like she's like a widow like her husband died like 
th they were kind of treating her like, oh, she should just be like the furniture that her kids sit on, you know, like mm -hmm. that she's not a person in her own right. And so like, I, honestly, I think that's like what the townsfolk were kind of afraid of. And I love that moment in the book when she goes to ask um, one of the neighbors for something and it's also another widow and she's like afraid to do it because she thinks that she's gonna think that like she's a witch and be scorned but the the widow actually like kind of like lets her in have some tea and like gives her the thing and like they have a nice chat and so like I, I thought that was like a nice moment of like solidarity of like recognition that like these women are trying to like you know be independent look out for themselves but like the society as a whole is like you can't do that <laughs> Yeah, well, what's interesting about the time is like one of the very few ways that a woman could like own property, be in charge of an estate, you know, like be her own self was to be a widow, was to like have had been married to a man who then died. Um, and there is some sort of like very bizarre power dynamic in that when people have to then confront her. And I also think like to add on to your point, Blake, like she's old. I think that like people fear her age and fear not only her age, but like her like chutzpah at the age that she is. Um, she's like still an incredibly lively, opinionated, you know, fun person. Um, and I, I feel like it, it's almost like they are threatened by that, which is interesting. And I think it's also, oh, it's okay, you can go. Sure. Yeah. I, mean, I remember that like, TikTok has made a great, great point of this. Some, white moms like to not like to but some conservative moms who i rely on their male counterparts and their idealisms they use that to defend misogyny so in this society we see that here where they're just like i want to say oppressed but they're using this ideology they're like you can't support yourself why because a man said that why because society that's run by men say this and continue this ideology of like you're nothing you're nothing you need me to rely on you because that's how i was taught and brought up and you should just you know bend over yeah i think yeah, the most sorry. interesting thing is that like her accuser was a woman like but see, uh, but see but then we go into but why does she think that who who is her influence to think you know what i'm saying yeah i feel like there's a lot of you know like sociological uh exploration that could be had um i think a lot of it is kind of very much baked into what we read for sure ace were you gonna say something oh, i was just gonna say how like you adding on to like the part where you talked about her age and how people probably fear her for that is also because she's very outspoken and how like you know she's old she's just she's just trying to vibe and live and then people are accusing her just for like literally living like the fact that their biggest thing is like oh if she showed some compassion or some emotion towards the trial then maybe this would have not happened but it's like what what emotion do you want her to show she's not gonna but like similar like get... the the whole reason why she's taken to trial is because she actually fights back. Like, yeah. She's accused of being a witch, right? And then if she if she had just like let the rumor, you know, dissipate, it would have been fine. But like instead she calls her accusers out and therefore gets put on trial. So like that's like a doubling down of that. Well, yeah, I think it's really interesting because they were like, Oh, you have to do this, otherwise the rumors are gonna continue. And if like you didn't deny rumors that you're a witch then you're going to be executed on the spot and she was like oh shit, i have to do this but and then it just was twisted against her it was like kind of it, either way that she went she was fucked over yep. and so like what yep. why did they hate her so much i mean other than like was was i can't re recall was there like a, a a text reason other than well, it was because she poisoned um her and then uh we later find out it's because she had like two jars of like something on the windowsill and the baker's wife grabbed the jar of vinegar had a sip and was like poison so stupid. <laughs> i mean Bitch. i'd be mad too that's gross <laughs> um was there any point in reading this that you like thought that she was guilty or was a witch or was i just like too along for the ride for my own good I, I like, I, I thought the book would have been a little bit more interesting if it did that. But I was honestly, I, for me, this read like completely historical. Like I didn't detect any magical realism. And in hearing the townsfolk's kind of crazy 
um, speculations and accusations. I was like in my head sifting out the bullshit and trying to find like, oh, what did Katarina actually do? Like, did she just walk by and look at them and that's it? <laughs> like, <laughs> for sure. Um, let's see. I got the impression that she uh, that she assumed that because she was an old woman, no one would actually be listening to her or watching her. That's interesting. That kind of turns it on her head. That like she felt a certain amount of anonymity in her age or status or position. Um, but it turns out people are nosy and are watching. Because I think you have to think about it. If there's something going on and there's one accuser, okay, well, next accuser, and you just keep the ball rolling because it's it's now entertainment. Like, I now want to see, like, how far this is going to go. I thought, she I thought was... she'd probably generally be rude to people, but I never thought she was actually maliciously harming people. Yeah, no, I feel like the thing is, like, if she was designated as some sort of, like, healer or trusted to, you know, create balms and things right. in a time when we don't actually know the effect of many concoctions, like, things could go wrong. Like, you know, and I think that kind of its own stakes in a way, um, which is fun. But then she's she's found innocent um how did we feel um yeah i i was kind of let let down by that like let down as in like an interested reader or let down by like you wanted her to be guilty or like what as an interested reader because i i didn't know that this was like based on a real story so just like storytelling wise that wouldn't really be a good like kind of solution to it like it wouldn't be like a good climax to it or anything but like I i'm happy that she she was proven not guilty but yeah it, it wasn't as spicy <laughs> but what i think is interesting is she's found not guilty not early on but like there's still a decent amount of book left because then like hashtag plague right um I really like that the book ended in Simon's point of view. Yeah, I was um, gonna say I, that too. Like, it really felt like a nice, like, epilogue tidying things up. Um, like, the one complaint I would... Oh, oh no, bad connection. Gianna, where did you go? <laughs> she, she said she'll be right back. So okay, cool. um, <laughs> we're just, we're all squished. We're a little... Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. We moved. We swapped places. Um, um, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Um, My fault. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, hold on. It'll come back to me. <laughs> no worries. Just um, it, what, did anybody else find the ending of the book like particularly karmic? Um, that, like, there's a lot of death. There's a lot of, like, very few people yeah. survived. Like her daughter, I think especially that was like so depressing. Um, I was a little end. depressed reading the ending. Not gonna lie. Honestly, towards like, the end though, it, like I know it was the plague, but like it almost felt like Rivka Galchin being a little cheeky and being like, "Oh, did she curse these people who accused her?" Like right. a, that was like a little wink, wink, where I didn't mind like the kind of subtle implication like obviously it was just a plague but it it was like oh and it, like it was just the way that she wrote it which made it sound like uh katarina was just going down a list and going mm -hmm. <laughs> a little was, bit for sure i was just double checking the year it's 16 18 and i was like oh that's a little late for the plague um but i, I remember what i was gonna say earlier um besides katarina and Simon, there wasn't really any characters in this book. I mean, there was a lot yeah. of other people in the book, um, but like, especially like with Katarina's like um, family, like uh, her sons and her daughter, like, and and the kids, like at a point they all just kind of started blurring together where I was just like reading names and like, then I would read a name and I'm like, oh, I think I've seen this name before, but I'm not sure. like really the only people that stuck with me with Katarina and Simon. And I think that's kind of why I get three stars is like, I wasn't as engrossed in the yeah. narrative as I wanted. Like, I felt like I was reading it very passively. Um, that maybe 
because of the format, like with letters, but I don't know. I, I think it might've just been like the way it was written had me like a little bit at arm's length. I mean, I wonder, I wonder like, had this book gone full town perspective, right. instead of trying to like break it out into these individuals, like if it had gone like the town as a character, which in many ways it kind of is like, mm -hmm. I don't mind the fact that we don't get that many details or or can distinguish individual people because it does very much feel like an entire group against one. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd be curious, like, would it have been more effective if nobody was named and these kind of like came through just as, you know, some sort of generic voice against Katarina? So... Um, just to add on to what you were saying, so like sometimes books have like a testimony or like a, like a little Bible verse or like something at the beginning of each chapter. Do you think that would have helped like set up the next part of the trial update and like things of that nature to progress the story or something else to just give us that narrative of the townspeople? No, I, I no, I mean I don't know if that would have helped or hurt. I I think that this book being kind of not structure less, but like kind of like not necessarily warning us when we're getting the next testimony. I think that kind of allows for a certain amount of uh, ambivalence in time, right. um, which I, I actually quite enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say like the town as a character thing, I thought was done really well with the testimonials because they're kind of rotating faces. You don't really need to know their names. I was talking more about like, um, like Katarina's family, like people who like were like repeated like characters who showed up and it was like, they had a presence, but they didn't really have a character, if that makes sense. Like I, I would have liked to see maybe more stuff with Katarina and her, and her family and like the dynamics between her and her sons and like why some of them were so estranged with each other. Like that kind of thing I think would have made me feel a little bit more for the family. Cause like I enjoyed Katarina's like, sauciness and her her sass but like i, I there, there was there like it, it was hard to see beyond that sometimes i mean well i think what was interesting at least to have simon there was simon was a, a lovely foil to katarina's sauce that like simon is so burnt out and uh, lovely and like stressed and old and there was something that was I think particularly touching about his desire to like step down from being her caretaker. Um, I found that part to be particularly engaging. I don't know if anybody else did, but I, I really liked Simon and I kind of felt for him and this burden of being so closely associated with somebody under trial. Mm -hmm. um, obviously we should feel like more sorry for Katarina because she's innocent, but like, I don't know, there's something about like his place as the keeper of her words that I found to be lovely. Mm. Yeah, I feel I like, like he kind of just got dragged into it, but it, it was nice, like, like in parts of the books, like we did get like these small, cha I don't know, chapters or so, where we get like insight of Simon and like how he feels about the situation and how like he does want to back down. It's so hard for him because like, he he knows that Katharina is like innocent, but no one else was going to help her with that. Right. And I thought it was very interesting that he didn't actually support her like at the trial. Um, he was just like, she knows that I support her. And he, he just, well, I think they didn't see each other for like a couple of years. I mean, uh, Simon, unlike like Simon, unlike pretty much everyone, really understood the weight of what he was up against, like the absurdity of these people, the absurdity of their accusations. Like you can't compete with baselessness. And when people are like just believing baselessness, how do you fight against that? Like this is fear mongering and storytelling. Like, you know, it's hard to testify. It becomes the trial. What I found interesting about the trial was it became less about evidence and more about just like moral feeling or like emotional connection. Um, well, yeah, because they were she, like, why aren't you feeling bad? Why aren't you crying? Yeah. Has everyone here, someone here seen The Crucible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was giving off those vibes at times. The Crucible is a very serious movie. This is funny. <laughs> like, and I, and, I, and I wish we could make a comedy out of The Crucible. I think everything's funny. I know it's bad. But, like, if we could just bring some of this humor into The Crucible, I'll be happy camper, to be honest. 
I think this is interesting yeah, I mean, to what Blake said that uh, that yeah. we didn't get much of her children because this was showing a disconnect from them. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. <laughs> you just didn't like it. <laughs> well, no, I just like it. I just didn't really connect with a lot yeah. of the characters. It was hard. It was hard for me to even. I liked Catherine and Simon's voices, like as characters, but it was hard for me to connect to them as characters. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like I enjoyed reading their voices and their perspectives, but like. I wasn't like, oh my god, I would die for her, you know. Um, and which then is weird, about I'm a very emotional reader. I cry at fucking everything, and so yeah. I was like, I was ready to feel, you know. <laughs> um, and I think this is about Simon. I think it also seemed like he'd have felt more able to keep going if it weren't impacting his daughter, who still has her life ahead of her. Um, He's like, oh yeah. no, she's wearing makeup. <laughs> <laughs> is that rose on your cheeks, love? You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, it's interesting. I feel like there is a, a, a I don't know, I, I kind of wish that this book had gone a little bit further into the the commentary on age. Mm. Um, I'd be curious to see. I mean, I don't know much about that time with regard to perception. I mean, like, I know the generic things that everyone knows about No, but she was age. 70? She was 70? Which... Old, old as shit for no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that's like that. That's a hundred in our perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like during it, it's out of the period of the bubonic plague, and people are still getting the plague. And it's nineteen, it's sixteen nineteen, it's sixteen twenty, and I forget what diseases are going on there. But you have malaria, cholera, things of that nature. You have um, we call it freshman cough, but it's something else. I can't remember what it's called. Like you have this going on, and she surpassed all of that. She made it past sixteen. Goddamn an infant. So. I, yeah, no, I think that, that calls into question like a certain amount of envy, right? Like she has land, she has property, she's alive, she's still like vibrant enough to like go on walks and pet the cow and like, you know, do her thing. So do you think that there's like a resentment towards her, especially if others might be not surviving as well? I'm going to say no, only because the way I see death, it's it's a finite end of what life is as suffering, I feel like they're all going through shit, you know, like they're, 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 they're risking their lives, breaking their backs to live another day. Why not? Like, like parents would kill their children because they didn't like, and, and they wouldn't even name their children because they wouldn't know how long they lasted. So I don't think it's a sense of envy. I think it's a sense of like self-preservation. If I'm not making it this far, she isn't either. Uh, yeah. Yeah, shout out to this comment historian in the chat. What up? Um, yeah, very historically. I mean, like, I'm sure that Ripley Galchin did an incredible amount of work. I hope to watch an interview post, um, just, just kind of see what went into it. Um, but it does make sense, uh, that these, you know, I, there's something about Katarina that it seems like the town feels that she is extraneous, um, and therefore for entertainment. Why not? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like I got that feeling like and, and that's why I didn't really feel like there was any magic in this book is because this book just felt so grounded in like fact and like voice that like I was like if you told me that these were actual letters like I would 100% believe you like I feel like she did the work and the research. Thanks. Um, so I want to know uh, Blake, you touched on your opinions a little bit, but for the uh, for Ace and Tiana who gave this three stars, what like worked and what didn't work? Like, what what earned your three stars, but what did not make it to the two? Who wants to go first? Go ahead. Um, we touched on this earlier. The disconnect between the, the townspeople and then Katrina or, is it Katrina or Katrina? Cat Katrina. Uh, Kat uh, uh, oh, jeepers. I think it's um, Katharina. I said it. It's Katarina. Yeah, no, I said it correct yeah. this whole time, and then I immediately started doubting okay. myself. So, <laughs> what, with their main gal, like, I respect it, but I'm also just like, I want to know what the other people think. Like, what, what's the other conjecture between the testimonials and between, like, what her account is? Like, yes, we still have her account, but we can also spin and be like, well, what did they see that fateful day that she, you know, put the poultice in someone's bed and that little passed away? Um, and then structurally, like, yeah, it's a letter. Letters are sometimes hard for me to get into because I'm very much character driven for storytelling. So I think that's just like, just how the pie crumbles. Like I need more character development and then we got to do the plot world building. And historically, yes, I loved it. Um, we know I can go on rants about history <laughs> for all day long. So I did enjoy that um, historical aspect. I, hmm. 
It's just like, Tiana's, like, Tiana's the Oprah meme. So what is the truth? <laughs> I just feel like you can add so much more to like really ground yeah. it within historical context. That's just- I would have been really curious as to like, I think Blake said it earlier, like what, what actually happened? Like what did she do when she passed by and the girl felt the pain? Like was, mm -hmm. you know, what, did she like have heartburn and she described it, you know, like I, I'd be curious to know what that would have been. I think there's joy in not knowing and there's right, that right, increased right. doubt. And you know, that's kind of the point of the book in many ways, but like, Curiosity, of course, you know, strikes. Ace, what about you? Um, what what earned your three stars and why didn't it make it to five? Well, I listened to most of it on audiobook, but then I was only listening to it when I'm working and then I started reading the book itself physically. And it was it was really hard to like imagine it, I guess. Cause like an audiobook, it really felt like a person telling you a story, you know. But when reading it, I couldn't really picture much of what was going on. Like, there, it wasn't very descriptive, which is okay. That's why I gave it three stars. I still enjoyed, like, the story aspect of it. I do wish, like Blake said, that we got more, like, perspective on what was really going on. So that's why it's three stars. Yeah, I would I would really agree with Ace because, like, at least when I read books, like, I I am very visual. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> like, I like actually picturing it. Same. And so like this book, like, because I, like I enjoyed the letters, but also I felt like I was being held at like at the impasse where like, whereas like something like Frankenstein, very easy to imagine everything and visually. But for some reason, this book, like, I almost feel like I, I wish I would have um, listened to it because I feel like that probably would have been better just like hearing the voices yeah the audiobook was really fun i would love to see like or hear like a radio play i would love to hear individual voices i would love to see this as a play script like i do think that because it is that epistolary format there would be a lot to be gained by adding a certain like personality or, or characteristic or tone that perhaps would aid in what you have described as like a lack of, of visual prowess um, I love hearing how different readers are because we all imagine things completely different and it's so cool. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a visual reader at all. Um, like I, I am far more excited about what we gain from not having that information. Like that's what's the curious part of this experience for me is like, I think of this book almost as like a, a retrieval of scant historical documents, right? Like with this information what can we conclude and i think that that's the interesting way to piece it together mm -hmm. in a narrative overwhelmingly that is about doubt and is about envy and is about you know mania you know what little information to make such astronomical events occur is interesting to me that's why um, i like being a historian our job is to read something and then we also have to analyze what we have and why things were left out. And then we have to go read those sources that were left out. But how do you know what was left out? Like, it, that's what I love about it. It's a big puzzle piece. And that's yeah. what this book is. Like, you're trying to in figure many out- many ways, yeah. Things. I feel like this book is an ode to that. Like, in many ways, it does feel like, you know, kind of like an ode to like, there's only so much we know. And there's very little we actually know about Katarina as a person, yep. I'm yeah. sure. Like, I'm sure we know lots and lots about Johannes. Like. He's famous, but like I'm sure, like his, like I'm sure his mother was a blip, um, because that's just what history tends to do. That's um, why the book's called that. <laughs> <laughs> the Yor so is referring to to Johannes Kepler. It took me this entire live show to get that. I am sorry. Well, like, yeah. they, said it, they said it one time in the book but i was like oh, okay because yeah. katarina says that to somebody else i was like okay yeah. but then like knowing it's based on an actual historical person and that is was a famous person whose mother was a witch makes sense well i, I also like let's unpack real quick because you brought it up like katarina saying that to somebody else i think is really interesting right like because the book is all about hearsay everyone's presuming that the mother is a witch right like this idea of having the knowledge that that is a truth, I think is really bizarre for her to like claim that. Um, is she teasing? Is she being cutesy? Is she sassy? Does she think it? Like, I, you know, I think that this, this, that's fun. 
I think it's fun because there is, a, I forget what century starts. There was a, a period of like, well, let's use the occult for, um, you know, kind of like mom jeans, right? Usually going to the thrift store. No, 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 no not listen, right. You don't get to listen. say right because how, no. no listen, Tiana, you can I get my point? Can I get my like point? Mom jeans, right? Can As I get my point? We all point. know what you're saying. Can I get my point? I'm just trying to get my point. So the idea of like, Thrifting became trendy because people on TikTok were doing it, right? So then you have people who come from this background who rely on thrift stores to get those, you know, get their clothing. So let's bring this back to this book. You have people who are actually their uh, ideology and their religion is based on the occult, right? Then you have non-POC using this ideology and using this to get more money, getting attention. So can we use that analogy here? I think yes. Like, is she really... So, I yeah. think we can. I think we can. I think we can. Because you're you're stumped. You're like, is she a witch? Do you think she is a witch? I think that's there. I think that's there. I can I can give you a thesis. I can give you a thesis tomorrow. <laughs> I look forward I to reading. It. My, my 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 laughing is more at like the way that you you said it with such like confidence Conviction? that we would completely get it. Like. Nothing. I rest my case, like your honor. I rest <laughs> my honor. Oh, uh, does anybody have any uh, parting final thoughts about this book? Um, I feel like we <laughs> we talked it pretty well. I really liked it. I really did. I mm. like. I think that the writing was lovely. I I would love to read more from Rivka Galchen. Um, Doesn't she have another one? Atmosphere disturbances. Yeah. Okay. And also, she's like a D in um, medicine. Damn. Smart. That's cool. I just wanted to point out that um, our next book, A Wish in the Dark, I was looking at it, and the back, it says that it's a tie inspired twist on Les Mis. Yes. I will be playing that shit in my car every day. Sorry, Mina. I love how we said that we were going to pick a like comforting book for <laughs> December, but if it's a twist on Les Mis, I expect to cry, right? Thanks, Ace. Oh, I'm going to sob. I'm sorry, I'm guys. Emotional. It's a middle grade book. I didn't expect it to be that sad. Okay. Middle grade books middle grades are sad. Middle grades are sad. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Go but I think uh, vibes look wonderful. Yeah. Make sure you tune in to Ace's channel to see our next and final live show of the year. If you are watching this, oh, were you, you going to, were you saying you what? Peace. Oh, peace. Oh, I was going to say, uh, if you are watching this post uh, post live, uh, comment below. Let me know. Did you have any particular thoughts on Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? What were your feelings and opinions? Thank you to my lovely co-hosts for this discussion. And we will see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. Ending broadcast now.